Hi, I'm Captain Mike. In today's video, we're going to make a pottery beveling block. Uh, they're called different things, I would imagine, but it is a device for cutting a bevel on a pottery slab if you want to make a cylinder. Show you what I mean. First, let me show you what we got here. This is what I made, okay? It has it has two two sides, a 45 and what's roughly 75, I think. I'm not exactly sure. But anyways, two different two different types of bevels. And what it's used for, for those of you who don't know and want to know, is if you're going to make a cylinder and you, you want to join these two ends right here, it's very difficult to get a, a good seam if you have two uh, lines like this. So potters use these and I personally would have a, a, a guide piece right here to bump it up against but for the uh, sake of this video we're going to dispense with that and I'm just going to show you how it cuts okay you just kind of line it up and then you just drag it down and you cut off a nice little bevel see that nice little bevel right there and that's what you cut off now to make this thing work it's going to have to match so you'll flip it over and cut off one on the other side. Alright, and now what you got is two pieces that will go together just like that. You see, you put a little slip in there and skeet them together like that. With, we're not putting a slip, of course, but you get the idea. And then it will make an almost invisible seam. You got yourself a coffee cup. Voila! Of course you got to do the bottom and you got to do this but hey this is the hard part this is making the cylinder so that's what this little gadget is for okay now you can buy them no problem with that everybody's got to make a living but I don't buy much if I can make it out of things that are readily available this is all made from nothing but scrap wood two sheet metal screws and some stainless steel fishing wire here's how I did it First, you're going to have to make yourself a pattern. And you can make it out of anything. I'll use plastic. You'll have to do the math. Uh, I'll give it to you real quick. But uh, to get the 90s degree, you need two distances that are same. That's one inch by one inch. That's going to give you 90 degrees there. The other one over here depends on the what angle that you want right here. For roughly 70 degrees, I did a two inch by one inch, okay? And I just cut it out. The uh, uh, length is on this particular piece to make it work, because you could take up the distance here, but just for grins and giggles, I made that piece five inches, okay? Five inches, okay? And you want to make it narrow or shorter, that's fine. But let's just say again, five inches long, it's about two and three eighths inches high, and that's an inch by an inch. That's right here is two by one inch. All right, you've got your pattern. You cut it out with an X-Acto knife. Now, I happen to use a bunch of scrap oak. I found that the thicker stuff slides better this way, but not that much better than say, uh, a three-quarter inch piece. This is just regular old three, a one by four uh, crappy lumber. It'll fly just as good, okay? So you can make it out of a one by four. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to trace this onto your piece of wood of choice, whatever you want to make. Trace it on with a pencil like that. Now, you can saw this out by hand. It does not have to be uh, rocket science. You can use a handsaw. You can use a hacksaw. I do it on a uh, bandsaw because I have one. But anything that will give you a rough cut, just one inch by one inch, and same here. These are the only angle that needs to be put in flat. I cut this to size on a table saw. Uh, but you know, you can, you can work around that if you wanted to. These are the only angles right here that are important. This could be thicker, this part. But this part can't to get you 90 degrees. You have to do the math right for those. So anyway, you've got all that figured out. You've got yourself your pattern traced on there and you have cut it out. Now the other thing that you have to do, and if you notice on this 
pattern, I have a little tiny hole right there. That's where I chose to put my thumb hole, which does not have to have one. You don't have to have one. In fact, I think the people that made this thing originally don't have a thumb hole. I find that it just fits nice. You can hold it. So you drill yourself about a three quarter inch hole. Now if you want to belt it off on your uh, um, uh, shaper, that's fine. Um, but you know, you go ahead and drill your hole at this time, or don't drill your hole, whichever you want to do. And after you've got it shaped like this, hole or no hole, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to determine the halfway point on whatever thickness of wood. This piece of wood happens to be uh, one and one eighth inches, so you'd make it exactly uh, uh, one half inch and a sixteenth of an inch, whatever the heck that is. But you'll put it exactly in the middle. Again, this is not. This doesn't have to be dead on. You're going to find when you start sawing these little relief places in here, it wants to wander. But you're going to go all the way around with your mark. You're looking for one that I had a mark on. Well, you can see the mark there. I put a mark there. You don't have to put a mark here. You got to put a mark here. You don't have to put one there and mark there. I put one on the top so I know where to put my screws. Okay. Now, once you've got your lines halfway whether it's three quarter inch piece of wood or one inch piece of wood, whatever you use, you've got it defined, one half inch. Then I take, and I use a hacksaw because you don't have to put much of a mark in here. You don't want to put much. The more you put, the worse off this angle is gonna be. So I just barely depress it. I just kind of start it right, like right on the edge right there and I'll make a little mark and I'll lick a little mark and I'll just kind of join them and it's the same here. Put a little mark, a little mark there and then I just join them. So there's just very, very shallow depression if you can see. All right. Once that is done, you're going to need to drill you a couple of holes and you'll need a drill and you'll need a bit that is smaller. Then I use a number four sheet metal screw. Uh, that's about three eighths of an inch, but uh, you could you, you, whatever you want to use is fine. You just make sure that your screw, I mean, excuse me, your drill bit is smaller than your screw. And then all you'll do is, this is not rocket science either, you can measure back if you want to, three quarters of an inch, a half inch, whatever you want to do, and you'll drill you a hole. Just about the length of these, these screws you gotta do. So you'll do that on both sides. And once that's done, you'll go ahead and take your two screws, and I, these happen to be stainless steel number four sheet metal screws, three eighths of an inch long. Use whatever makes you feel good. Appropriate screwdriver. This, these are very small Phillips heads, so it takes a small screwdriver. And I go ahead and I start these. I put them down almost all the way. Very easy to do. The wider wood is not as likely to split, and of course drilling the hole alleviates the splitting of the wood even more. But there you go, then you've got your two screws like that. The next thing you're going to do is I use stainless steel fishing line. Uh, this is um, uh, 16 pound, uh, what does it say on it, uh, .015 gauge uh, stainless steel wire. And I start by taking a piece of it and I twist it around this. I go back to my left about three times, come back and catch it in that notch and bring it through that notch, those notches that you cut. Before you go all the way around with it, take your screwdriver and tighten it. And the reason I go to the left on it is when you tighten to the right, it tightens this down. So anyhow, I think that that's right. Don't uh, hold me to that. Then I take my wire and I hold it firmly and I put it in that groove and I put it in this groove all the way along the end. Tighten it as much as I can. Be real careful because this stuff will cut you. And I wrap it around about three times, hold it with my finger, take my screwdriver, and tighten it down. And on occasion, as you tighten it, it'll tighten this wire right here and pop it. So if that happens to you, don't uh, don't worry about it. Start over. 
Once those two are tight, take you some wire snips. I use these kind that are flat on the bottom, but you can get away with almost anything. Come up under it, cut it as close to that screw as you can. Okay, come back over here, pull that one up, cut it as close as you can. Now this is kind of important here. You want to go and this little pigtail that sticks up right here, uh, take your screwdriver or a knife or something and move it around, get it out of the way because it'll poke you every time. Trust me. Ask me how I know. So get that out of the way so it's a nice clean installation. And folks, that is it. That's all you got to have. You've got your wire right there for the 70, 75 degree, whatever you want to make that, and a 90 degree, which is pretty much standard. And uh, that's it. It'll work. When it breaks, you put your line on it, and that's it. Now you can make these out of a lot of different things. I'm fixing to make one out of two pieces of Corian, and uh, the reason for that is I've got a lot of Corian. I thought it'd be neat, and if I put two half inches of Corian together, my line is already here in the middle. Uh, I'm sure what I'm talking about. See, this is the block that I'm putting together now, and you know it'll already have a half inch thing. I'll just clean it all up and cut it out on my side. Well, I don't know what happened, what happened, but when I went to uh, to check on this video, uh, this last few minutes wasn't on there, so I'm going to have to record it over again. Um, but there is the Corian slab that I mentioned to you, and uh, I think in the other part of this video you saw it with the clamps on it. The clamps have been removed. It's glued together with super glue. You can see where the seam is, and that's what I'll use as a line to put my wire in. I'll just simply draw from this pattern on the Corian, cut it out as usual. I'll use a band saw because this is harder than wood. Uh, and when I get through, it'll look just like this. It'll just be out of Corian and only an inch thick. But if you make one, as I mentioned before, you can make it out of regular pine. This is just an old piece of uh, one by four lathe. That's just a thinner piece of oak I had laying around. And that's a thicker piece of, uh, I don't even think that's oak, that's some kind of foreign wood. But anyway, it's uh, use whatever you want to use. Uh, make yourself one of these and let me know how it comes out. And if you uh, see where I can improve on this, please let me know. And I will try to incorporate those uh, improvements in the next one that I do. And in the meantime, enjoy. And uh, I'm Captain Mike, and I'm out of here.